We are extremely pleased that you are here. We are extremely pleased that we are here. It is co-creating at its best. You are knowing what you are wanting? Have you figured out how to let that in? Have you figured out how to not be a vibrational mismatch to your own desire? It takes some practice, doesn't it? But that really is what deliberate creating is all about. And it really is what living happily ever after is all about. It's about life causing you to identify new desires. You can't even slow that down. New desires are at an all time height in all of civilization, in all of humanity, in all that we know as all that is. You are out here on this leading edge in this magnificent time and space, and you are individually and perfectly being inspired to new desire with all things that you observe and with all things that you experience and with all things that you participate in. It causes a focus within you that you can't stop. You can't even really slow it down that much. There's a current or an energy. There's a fulfillment of purpose. There is a you being you in this physical body and what is happening around you, inspiring within you new desires, new calling forth of life force and energy in order to comp accomplish those desires that are being born within you. And so never before have we witnessed an explosion of personal desire as is happening in this new time. It truly is a new beginning, a time when your exposure to life is causing an eruption within you of what you think about things. And that's what each of you knew when you decided to come into this physical body, you knew you would be inspired and you also knew that once the inspiration of the new idea was born, once there was a vibration that became more noticeable to the point that you were thinking about it. And once it was more noticeable to the point that you were speaking about what you were thinking about, you knew from your non-physical vantage point coming into this physical body that there would be manifestations that would be the result of all of the thoughts that you were thinking. And you knew you were coming into variety, into contrast, into differences, and you knew the benefit of that for yourself. So here you are with all kinds of things being inspired within you. And now what we are about as we're interacting with you is to remind you that this was all your intention and to remind you that those desires cannot help but be born within you and to remind you that your inner being and the source within you is aware of the desires that are being born within you and to remind you that you are a vibrational being living in a vibrational world and that everything that is manifested so far whatever you can see whatever you're reading about or hearing about even if it just happened today it is so past tense that it really does not deserve as much of your attention as you are giving it because by the time something manifests, there's been a long stream of energy that has been flowing toward it and the manifestations, all of them, every one of them, no matter what they are, every one of them is the inevitable result of the mix of energies that has been flowing. We want to help you sort out a little bit today, how thoughts are turning to things how the vibrational nature of your being can be deliberately directed. And most of all, most of all, most of all, most of all, how you can rediscover, how you can return to the satisfaction that life is meant to provide for you. Satisfaction is the best word that Esther can find when we offer a vibration that means this, the balance between who you really are, who you were before you came into this physical body and who that non-physical part of you has become since you've been in this physical body, that vortex part of you, that inner being part of you, that expanded, evolved whole of you, that feeling of satisfaction is when that whole of you, that who you really are of you and who you're being in this moment, meaning what you're thinking about, what your beliefs and thoughts are, when those vibrations blend, 
when there's harmony, harmonics between you and you, that's satisfaction. When your desire is not doubted by you, but understood by you. When your desire is something that you are feeling now and patiently in anticipation of further and further expansion, and evolution and growing and becoming of it. But if you have a desire and you are looking at the evidence of the absence of your desire, then you are not feeling satisfaction. You are feeling something far less than satisfaction. And that emotional guidance is letting you know about the one and only thing that really matters to you. And that is the blending of you and you, the blending of you and you. Because you did not decide to come forth into this physical body as a sort of renegade who would not blend with the whole of you who you are. You did not say, I'll go forth and I'll remember nothing of my own clarity. You didn't say that. You said, I am clear. I am pure positive energy. I am love. And this love will be embodied in my physical embodiment. And I will go forth into the perfect environment of perfect contrast. And from it will be born within me a clear distinction of what I prefer, a clear desire of what I prefer. And I know you said this. We heard it. We said we would remind you. I know that once. Any desire is born within me, no matter how broad or narrow, no matter how deep it is, no matter how it is deemed to be by others who perceive me having this desire, every desire, big or small, is understood by the non-physical source of that which is you. And you knew the source energy would back you up in all of your desires. Further, you knew you were not coming forth into a physical environment of competition because you knew that you were equal in terms of your access to this energy that creates worlds. And you knew that someone else's utilization of the physical environment to inspire their desire and then their alignment with and utilization of energy to accomplish whatever they are accomplishing. You knew that no matter how many others were utilizing this energy that creates worlds, that that would not constitute any deprivation for you or anyone else, because you knew that the energy comes forth in order to support the desire that you have managed. And so we want to bring you to the place by the time we come to the culmination of this gathering today, we want to bring you to the place. If you are willing of feeling and understanding of really knowing the power of your own focus and the importance of your own personal satisfaction, the satisfaction factor is the best way of describing how you utilize the laws of this universe. Law of attraction is a law that exists in all that is. Whether you are non-physical as we are, or physical as you are, or physical and non-physical as you really are. This law of attraction says that that which is liked into itself is drawn. It's the law that makes your radio frequencies line up. It's the law that is behind everything that exists. So sometimes you say, well, I'm getting better at using law of attraction. And we say, you don't use law of attraction any more than you use gravity. And we suppose you use gravity when you understand it. And then you create your contraptions, your airplanes and such that help you to defy it for a little bit. But law of attraction is a powerful law that is constant and steady and always fair. And so it's your job to let your life provide for you your desire. And it's your job to focus in on it until you have clarity about what that desire is. And then it's your job to pay attention to the way that you are feeling so that you manage your attention to subjects so that you don't get too far adrift from your own desire. It's such an interesting thing to watch you with a very clear state of desire about something and then listen to you state the opposite. And the reason that you do that is because the new desire is in the state of becoming and what you're observing has already become the other things that you've been in the state of becoming about, just not this new thing. So when you take score of the manifestation before those thoughts have turned to those things and you see the absence of those things that you desire, then you speak most often because you are so enamored with your physical awareness of life, what you're seeing and hearing and smelling and tasting and touching. You want to call that your reality and we want to call it. We want to make this distinction with you. It is your manifested reality, but it is far from your reality and it is a scanty part of the reality that it really is. 
We want to call your attention to the vibrational reality, to the vortexual reality, to the reality that you've already created. We want to call your attention to the reality that is in the making that will manifest. Oh, it will manifest and you will have opinions and judgments and responses to the manifestations. But if you could get your attention off of those manifestations for more of your time and put your attention upon what you're doing with your energy, you would have more control of your own manifestations. That's all we're saying. So for a little while, we called this gathering the science of deliberate creation, but you got crazy about that. You started behaving about this body of work, the way you've been behaving about your work in general, where you just worked too hard about the thoughts that you were thinking. When you caught wind of the idea that your thoughts create, at first you liked that before you found out you can't control your own thoughts. <laughs> and then you started panicking as you try to suck them back before law of attraction got hold of them. But too late, law of attraction gets hold of them right away. And so we want to show you how you can become more anticipatory of good things coming to you and to the others, to the others who you care about. I want to show you how you create your own reality and how much more easy it is than most of you have been making it out to be. So then, as we saw you panicking about the science of deliberate creation, we thought it was a perfect name. Oh, such a good name, but we can't give it to you anymore because you overreacted to it. <laughs> science, because it is always unfolding. It is ever unfolding science because it is ongoing. It is always new, new discovery, new discovery, new discovery. Deliberate because you're thinking on purpose creation because you can't stop that perfect name But now we are calling this body of work the art of allowing and it is an art because you learn it It's the art of allowing today We would like to begin to call it the art of satisfaction the art of me blending my desires and my beliefs the art of me blending who I really am with who I'm being right now the art of satisfaction the art of paying attention to the guidance within me rather than trying to get someone else to sort out something and then give you the result of it how's that working out for